Well, I guess it's as good a time as any to get started. Here we go. Welcome, everybody. It's another Selway Techno Saturday. Gray and rainy day here in New York. Feeling kind of mellow. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll get some energy going and pick things up over the next 60 minutes. This is, of course, 343 Labs 343 TV. We do this almost every day, right about the same time, 1 o'clock. And uh, Saturday is my day. Welcome, everyone, in the chat. Let's see, who was here first today? John H. Kingston III from Rockaway Park, New York. He's a regular. Good to have you back. Hello to Modicate from Turin. Uh, I've been there. You guys call it Torino, right? Uh, Dinfluence30, greetings. And I believe we've had Enig Enigmatic Onion in the chat previously. I like that name. It's funny. What, a, what about an onion can be enigmatic? Maybe you can explain that for us. Because I don't believe I've ever found an onion to be enigmatic. Not to say it couldn't. So, uh, Rudy Wolf, hello. Uh, hope things are going well for you there in Berlin. And everybody's all over the world is keeping safe and sound and being careful these days. We got to be careful. Wear your mask. Obviously. How many times do we have to say it? Come on. So today, all right, I got I to gotta admit, um, the, the, the concept, the title, the content for the stream today is, isn't the most original and exciting and unique, uh, clever idea. All right. You know, it's like arranging on the timeline. I mean, this is what happens. I'll be frank. If I don't come up with like a super like clever idea that we can talk about or a specific lesson, you know, every third techno Saturday, I do some kind of arranging. So today I'm just going to arrange what I'm working on and we're just going to hang out and talk about it and uh, see what happens. And as ever, please ask questions. I'll do my best to follow along in the chat and uh, respond. Uh, for example, Enigmatic Onion says, the layers of the onion make it enigmatic. Also from New York Upstate. Good. Good to have you here. So, uh, all right. So we got an answer about the Enigmatic Onion. Good one. All right. So letting, just reminding you guys, ask questions and, you know, have a conversation. This is a conversation. You guys are hanging out in the chat. If you're not in the chat, hop in there. Say Hello start, uh, you know, get to know who, who, who's part of the community here. And that's, you know, community is one of the big reasons why 343 Labs does this 343 TV series. We like to share what we're doing with the world, show you what we're all about, talk about what 343 Labs is. Of course, 343 Labs is a music production school. We have uh, our original location in New York, and we also have our new location at Riverside Studio in Berlin. Things are going well. Things are growing. We've got online classes starting all the time. So that's also one of the reasons we're here. Please look below for info about 343 Labs, the websites. You can subscribe. You can like. You can dislike. I don't care. Interact with us. Let us know how we're doing. And uh, also, we have been doing giveaways. This week is no exception. Arturia is one of our sponsors, and this week I believe we have an effects bundle from Arturia that we're giving away. There will be a link in the chat. If you, if you haven't entered, you can still enter, and we will announce the winner by the end of the broadcast today. So keep your eye out for that information. 343 Labs is here in the chat. Our good pal Thomas, who is our everyman who does everything. He's actually not just an everyman, he's a superman. Thank you, Thomas, for being there for all of us. And uh, he's here keeping an eye on the chat as well. He'll be providing you guys with more information. If you have any questions about 343 Labs, go ahead and ask them here in the chat. Um, all right. I guess it's time to arrange because we are arranging on the timeline uh, today. And uh, I've actually had a lot of, you know, melodic techno is such a thing now, right? So um, let's get over to my Ableton Live page with my fancy spectral visuals on the left and right. Um, so yeah, melodic techno is a thing. And for my money, when, my favorite kind of marriage of melody and harmony and techno comes from kind of a classic Detroit direction, you know, uh, and that's kind of what I'm vibing on today. Uh, I have some parts already put together. Let's see what I've got. All right, well, we gotta have a kick drum. Got a bunch of percussion. 
lots of hi-hats just to get these layers of energy kind of a noisy percussion sound that you know it could be a snare it could be a clap it could be whatever you can play around with this a little bit I got some zap kind of noises right and then what I started with really was here let's get this going by itself so this is the whole basis for the track and you know it's kind of this melodic repetitive groove that you could think of it as a bass line it's kind of low but it's also going to be mainly our our lead element and then i've got a supporting lower more simple bass sound underneath it give it some fat subby kind of groove there all right so anyway let's get this back in sync all right, now we don't want the, the, the strings yet. Let's see. So let's listen to this for a minute. I'm going to check on the chat. Dinfluence30 asks, how do you create a quick sketch arrangement? I guess you could say that's what I'm going to do today. Um, now, the more I talk, the less I will get done. That's the way it goes with arrangement. When you're really... You know, when you're really focused on arranging, it's you're not like talking to people and having a conversation. You're in here and you're looking at the details and you're listening, and you're thinking. So, um, but yeah, let's try to do that. Let's try to, uh, that's sort of the idea is, you know, these are these parts that I, I, I've created. Now in the past, I've talked about like ways to, you know, break out of loops and to make longer parts in the session view before you go into the arrangement or, you know, whatever pattern based Thing you're working with rather than one bar loops or two bar loops you think about 8 16 32 and have longer changes and arrangement moves ahead of time that's not happening here this is going to be more like building from the ground up and any changes that i want in the arrangement i'm going to do in the context of the timeline and uh so yeah and, and this is you know this is nothing new honestly this is just bread and butter arranging on the timeline and uh thinking about also, part of this is, and we probably should have included this in the show title here, was it's not just arranging, it, we're composing as well. I haven't finished writing parts yet. So, you know, some of what I have in mind, I, I want to get some structure down bef uh, before I commit some of these ideas that are in my head, because I think how the arrangement goes will determine some of the composition choices that I make. So this, I guess today's show more is composition and arranging on the timeline as opposed to simply arranging only because I have I'm not done with my parts yet so all right now I think what we're going to do is start with the kick drum and the main sort of melodic groove I don't know what to call it in in, uh, in classical music we call it an ostinato it's like a repeating phrase that doesn't change um yeah let's just do this Click, hold, and hit tab. It's my one of my my favorite old little Ableton key command things is that how you can just quickly move a clip into the arrangement view like that. You don't have to copy and paste. You just click, hold it, and then hit tab while you're holding down your mouse on that uh, on that clip, and then drop it wherever you want. All right. So let's say I want to have thirty two bars of kicks. That's another thing I wonder about. Like. I see a lot of people like copying in a one bar clip and then duplicate, 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 duplicate. You can do it that way. But one of the nice fast things about Ableton Live is if you have a, a clip that's already looping, you don't have to copy paste. You just drag it and it'll repeat. And you can split it off later if you want to make changes. All right, let's grab that main melodic groove in there. Roll down while I'm still holding it. Click that track back to arrange button and drag it out. It's got my shoulders moving. We must be good. We're in the ballpark. All right. Too many tracks open. I can't see everything. I think we need to put in a hi-hat or something. Let's try 
try this one. Not very exciting. Nope. We'll start with the easy. Just your basic upbeat. It's almost like more of a shaker, isn't it? I like that, though. In between hat and shaker. Good place to be. I'm going to drag this out to... 65. And, you know, this is an obvious move, but let's just split the kick drum clip right at 33 and drop it out for one one beat. And that's when the next thing's going to happen, which could be what? Could be anything. Do I want to add more energy with the bass? Do I want to add more atmosphere with some kind of pad sound? Or, or do I want to throw in an effect there? Um, let's stick with what I have for right now rather than going through, like, composition and sound design quite yet. I mean, even just simply adding another hi-hat right there would be good. And we can just build up the drums slowly. Let's see. That one comes later. Maybe that one. All right, I'm going to try this first, this hat two. All right, and we'll put that right there at 33. Back to arrange. Oh, of course I did the wrong one. That sounds good, though. <laughs> That's where it was supposed to be. That was a nice happy accident, though. It, it made me think of, oh, maybe I can have the different MIDI patterns switching and playing on different sounds as an arrangement technique over, uh, over the course of the, uh, of the track. You know, that would be like these nice subtle changes in rhythm. Like, instead of just the same MIDI pattern coming in and out, it could, you know, come in and come out and then come back in again on a different sound. I don't know. All right, we need another layer, I guess. What if we do that? All right, so where did I put that in at 41? The zaps. Something funny going on here. I put some uh, modulation on, oops, in this clip. Let's see, where is it? Hmm. So we're, I, I failed to mention earlier, I'm using the, the Live 11 beta. And there's some little user workflow things that are different. I'm like, wait, where's that thing? Where's that button that I'm used to seeing all the time? So, um, all right, I'm going to make this easy on myself. So here, the automation, there's a pitch bend going up in here. I'm not hearing it in the second half. So here's where I'm just going to duplicate it. And that should repeat that little automation that we're not seeing right now. Let's turn this on. Add lane for each. There it is. Right, so that, that's what I wanted to see. And I'm just going to randomly take a kick drum out there, even though it's a funny place for it. And maybe put in another uh, hi-hat layer. Let's take that next one and drop it here. So that's another kind of thing that I like to think about while I'm arranging. Is, and it's, I'm not always doing the same number of bars before the next change, right? It, it doesn't have to be four, eight, sixteen. It doesn't have to be multiples of four or two. It, I mean, you can go in and drop things in whenever they feel like it. In sort of the same way you might do if you were performing live and you just launch the clip or hit the note when you feel like hitting it. I can try to have a little bit of that, not set, not random, but slightly surprising change that happens every now and then where it isn't usually expected to happen. Maybe we do 
drop that in there. What, what bar was that? It was like 50 something. Or was it 49? Okay. Let's drop that into. We'll have to listen. Martin Crockett says that click hold tab shortcut is gold. That's just like, you know, that's it's the basic old school fast workflow thing you got to know. Yeah, maybe. I'm going to wait a little bit longer, actually. Sort of reset. Let's bring it into 57. This might not work, but we'll see. All right, we'll keep going. We'll just drag, select and drag all of those guys out. And then maybe another element wants to come on come in at 65 i was originally thinking ahead about maybe having something drop out at 65 like the kick but because i kind of shifted it over sort of a couple bars be, based on where i put that zappy percussion part that comes in and out that kind of ex it kind of put the phrasing over a little bit and it made me rethink about exactly how soon i was going to make the bigger change <laughs> You know what? I'm not going to I'm not going to do that. I'm going to have it I'm going to not do that little drum drop out. Maybe bring the hat in right at the same time. And I don't know. Yeah, let's leave that later. Okay. This is like a pretty good solid first couple of minutes, I think, right? get into some uh want to get into some automation some because that main lead kind of synth part is very static it's a nice groove it's keeping the energy going but um it is it could get we could get more out of it so i definitely want to play this sound i want to tweak this sound and have it sort of build up so uh where have we got the synth here here's our main melody track and i'm using this arturia sem really nice virtual analog uh synth um kind of it was you know since arturia is our sponsor this week i uh, i only have one of the arturia effects actually i've got this uh this plate which i've got in here just to i'm just trying it out really I haven't used it before and i need to definitely get in onto some of those other arturia effects i've heard they sound really good so anyway, since they're uh, helping us out with the giveaway, I have been using some Arturia synths along with uh, this uh, in this track today. So I think we'll just keep this simple. I mean, I've got the filter frequency to play around with. If I can automate that, I think the resonance to start with. We could, I don't know, maybe tweak the effects a little bit, but I'm gonna maybe I'm gonna keep those in the background and use other effects on top of that later. All right, so let's see where are our automation lanes. So there, since I've been playing around with it, Live's already showing me the envelopes. Let's go back to the beginning and figure out where we want to start this. Maybe I want to start it even lower than that. Right, so the f the cutoff frequency is pretty much all the way down, but it still sounds a little bit bright because of the envelope modulation. So maybe we can also modulate the amount of modulation. So just a little bit less right there in the beginning. I'll increase 
increase that. This is sort of my first level of energy. Let's go back to the filter. I don't want to go too high right now. We want to let the drums carry the energy right now, mainly. The increase in energy. All right, there's a little bit of an increase in the filter right there, but just a little. I'm going to go back down again. Let's make this larger so I can see it better. We'll go back up again. That's a good moment for it to get bigger. If I had a controller hooked up, that might be a more fun way to do this. I'm just adding breakpoints as I listen. There's that noise part that snare sort of noise that comes in. Let's see what happens if we play around with the resonance. Gets a kind of a bit brighter there. Do add right click, add lane for each automated envelope so I can see how all those envelopes are working together. And maybe uh, let's see what happens if I bring the cutoff back down as the resonance increases. We should hear the sweep of the filter a little more obviously when the resonance comes down. Because this, is, this isn't totally the big peak yet. All right, here we are. Two minutes of techno, M musical detroit -y melodic techno, right? Uh, Martin Crockett is asking, does the SEM use a lot of CPU? I don't know, let's see what uh, Live tells us. This is a nice new feature in Live 11 where we've got per track monitoring for how much a particular plugin is using. So right now it's very, very low. I'd say it's pretty efficient. I mean, and this isn't, uh, it's monophonic right now. We're hearing two oscillators, but I'm not playing great big fat chords. I think this one over here, I've got. Uh, you know, that's the profit that I'm going to add. This is something I'm going to add later. This is going to take up a little bit more CPU. And it sounds like, yeah, the, the polyphony is limited to six I actually want to increase that and that's going to increase my cpu usage but still i think overall most of these arteria plugins are pretty efficient um a couple of them are hogs <laughs> if i recall uh, i think like the the bukla maybe is pretty heavy i think it sounds really great though i don't know maybe we'll uh we'll throw it in there and see and yeah, Martin, the, the tone is pretty amazing. All of these Artur Arturia synths have a really nice quality to them. Their models are pretty good. Well, very good. Um, Dinfluence30 uh, asks, which plugins do you have on your master channel? Um, right now? All right. Well, there's some stuff here. That's my stream sort of plugin. It's you're separating the audio out once to my headphones, and then one is a separate uh, one going out to the stream. I'm just mixing through glue. Um, I'm definitely somebody that, I mean, I like mix through compressor, but I like to do most of my loudness and my maximizing and my, you know, tone of my mix in the mix before the master bus. This is just a little touch. Just to kind of, you know, literally, you know, it's using the compressor for what it's good for. It's gluing everything together. And it's also, you know, I'm doing a little slight clipping so it's, you know, it's giving it a little bit of extra loudness, but it's not really changing the dynamics a lot. And, and yes, thank you. Glad you liked the track. Um, 
another thing I'll mention, actually, this is sort of outside the scope of uh, arranging, uh, composing arranging, but since it's here, I will mention it. Uh, this came up in one of my classes recently. That, um, I have this custom rack. I've used this before in the stream. I made this rack out of some free impulse responses that were made by a mastering studio in the UK. Forgive me for forgetting the name uh, at the moment, but they've made a couple of impulse responses of the sound of PA systems in different spaces. So one of them is like a function one in a nightclub, and the other one is this big sort of bass heavy sound uh, portable PA that is used for big events and like raves and stuff. And I think it's like recorded in a really big room, so it's totally booming. And these are these are fun to hear your mix in to get you give give you a little kind of idea. It's like a virtual room to listen. Like, what's my mix gonna sound like over a club sound system? You know, and it sounds like you're just running it through a reverb, but it's a real place. Run, and then the tone of the mix is... All right. You know, you're kind of hearing the frequency response of that sound system and what your track is going to sound like in that space on that system. So it's a nice little reference for mixing and, you know, mastering and stuff like that. That's just... I'm pointing it out because it's here. All right, so let's get back to what I was doing here with the uh, automation for this sound. So I've got this kind of little mini buildup. Pretty good energy. And even though the filter is going down, it still has, it's still pretty bright. Maybe we'll just keep this going. Because that might just be the spot where that may, that might be just sort of the first break. Maybe we'll just keep all these guys going. All right. So now what? Um, to save time. If you're working quickly, I think one of the questions earlier was about, you know, how do I sketch out quickly rather than, you know, maybe I know what I want to do here next. And rather than just copying and pasting or clicking and dragging everything one at a time to the next section, I can just select a range of stuff that happened already and then move that over. Not So, you know, let's say I want all of the drums and the kick to continue. I just need to find a spot where, you know, let's say I want all of those drums, right? So I just use the loop starting in to select from 61 to 73 and that's that's 12 bars maybe i don't want but let's do 16 bars and be normal um so i have all you know it's just going to make a vertical slice through my whole arrangement here including the uh well depending on whether it's locked or not inc uh, you can you can choose to copy the uh, automation or not i'm going to lock it so that it doesn't uh move I think that should, it might copy it. I don't know. Let's see. And then let's just move that over here to bar 81 and paste. Yeah, it didn't do the automation, which I, I didn't want that. So that did exactly what it's supposed to do. So the automation on the synth is going to be the same. Maybe we could try putting the bass in there. Let's see. All right. There's my bass. There's my bass track. Drag that out. That might work. Now, I'm going to try to add something atmospheric in here because this is sort of going to, I want this to be more melodic and I've got these big chords coming in later. Um, Sorry, Jean-Francois, that you don't like the, the spectra on the side. I'm not a video artist. Maybe I should. Maybe you could do it. Do you know how to do it better? Let's put your money where your mouth is. If you could help me do better visualization, I would appreciate it. Thank you. In the meantime, I'm learning. <laughs> That's why we're all here, right? Um, let's see what else is going on here in the chat. We're actually, we're a little past the half. We're at the halfway point. So it's a good time to pause and talk and hang out. Um, enigmatic onion is being enigmatic. Well, no, he's got lots of questions. Um, 
Hyperpop, not familiar, but has elements of techno melodic that, uh, that I speak of. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look for that. Thanks for the suggestion. Monist Impulse, idea for future techno Saturday, deep dive into how you use these IR auditions to master. Sure, we could do that. We could do like a mixing mastering thing and we can go over that. Um, and um, Dinfluence asks, how can we buy the plugin sound system? Uh, it's all free. The IRs, you can download yourself, but um, I am willing to share my rack with you. Uh, perhaps, you know, Thomas, if you're listening, maybe we can set up a download link for, for everybody later on. I am happy to share this instrument rack with everybody. No problema. Um, and uh, uh, thank you, Monist. I appreciate that you like the side spectra. I, I have to say, to be fully honest, Jean-Francois, I agree they aren't amazing. They could be better. So again, if you know some cool OBS tricks for visualization, I would appreciate that. Um, and okay, we're at our halfway point. This is Selway Techno Saturday on 343 TV, brought to you by 343 Labs. 343 Labs is a music production school. We have a location in New York where I am. And we have our newer location in Berlin at Riverside Studios. We, we have a new Discord server now. We're just sort of diving into that world. So if, if that's something you guys like to do, you might check out the new 343 Labs Discord server. I'm sure Thomas can provide a link to that. Uh, we'll be having events in there. We'll be doing like feedback in there. You guys can talk to each other and share information and talk about music and ask questions. That's, you know, we really want to have a central place when we're not streaming, a central place for you guys to come and hang out and talk and ask us questions. I can't promise I'm going to answer every little notice I get on Discord. It can get crazy on Discord, but, you know, we'll pop in every now and then. We'll have some kind of a schedule happening and there will be event announcements and things like that. So definitely check out the Discord. And yeah, I think, you know, hopefully there's a link for that somewhere that uh, we can give you guys to make it easy to find. Um, and of course, right, we do this every day, 1 p.m. We do, yeah, we have Daltrick on Monday. That's the next one. Uh, our fearless leader, Max Wild, has a, a his the Theory Thursday. My very good friend, Abe Duque, does his basics show on Fridays. And, uh... Tetro, I'm going all out of order. I always like space on the schedule. It's crazy. I should know after all these weeks. But Tetro talks on Tuesdays, and uh, and then Wednesday, Lewis Beck is uh, hybrid studio, right? So you know that's pretty much our regular lineup. We do also have uh, occasional Sunday feedback sessions, and uh, Ariel, I think is his name, does a monthly mixing show. So definitely keep your eye on our schedule subscribe get the notification so you know when we're going live and uh roughly how close martin's asking roughly how close is the arrangement at this halfway point to be finalized well okay to be honest it's not even halfway yet it depends on how long it is let's see we've got just we've got three minutes now i say it's roughly halfway um in terms of the basic structure and you know let's see if we can't um try to get like to five or six minutes of the rough structure it's going to take some time after that to refine as i said i want to add more stuff the comp the composition part that can just throw a whole wrench in the works and make you take forever depending on how quickly the musical ideas come together um before i dive back in uh i'll finish the the halfway point spiel uh we have our giveaway this week of course the, this Artoria effects pack, uh, you can still sign up. We'll be announcing the winner at the end of the show, right before the end. And uh, also, I would remind you, as I did mention, we're a school. We have classes uh, op running uh, in person and online. I teach online primarily. Um, I've got a synthesis and sound design course. The next one, I believe, starts in January. And uh, I don't know, if you like what I do and how I work... Uh, you know, and you're thinking about taking a class, uh, the one, what I do is, you know, I do Ableton Live courses too, but the, the synth and sound design for producers course is kind of 
demystifying synthesis and looking at synthesis from a creative point of view, from a producer composer point of view, more than a like learn every little technical detail point of view, but getting to know enough about types of synthesis that you're more comfortable uh, modifying presets, making your own basic sounds and making, you know, being creative and, you know, being more polished about the sounds and uh, just, it's kind of like an artist getting to know his colors and his, and his brush strokes, right? Just what, knowing more about the choices you have as a producer, as a composer, about how to use electronic sounds. So, and it's, uh, it's not specific to a DAW. Uh, I do use Ableton Live, but you can come in with another DAW, that's fine. We'll, we'll make it work. We use Arturia plugins. We use the plugins, you know, if I have them and you have them, we can look at those too. We can be flexible. A lot of times these classes are, they're smaller groups. They're more, almost like group private lessons. You get a lot of attention. Uh, so if that's something you're think about, uh, thinking about doing, you know, give it a try. I think we've got like post Cyber Monday, like Cyber Week special still going on. And, and again, whatever links that we have, there should be links here on uh, to get to our website for more information. And of course, we can throw things in the chat here. So, all right, back to the music. All right, I think I want to start bringing in some other, well, I don't have too many other elements, right? I've got all my drums in almost. Um, those zaps I can bring back in. I've got the bass that I just brought in, finally. the I get a lot of variation out of automating, modulating the main synth line. But let's see, I have this sort of, I'm still working on this part. I wanted this kind of floaty high. It's like kind of a bright pad or string kind of a thing. And it's not exactly quite there yet. I might play around with some effects or something. But let's see what happens if I have like maybe fade this in. In this section. I could even start fading up in the background before the kick drum drops out. So let's drop it in a little earlier. Maybe. Oops. My trackpad's failing me. Okay, back to where we belong. Hi, shiny pad. So I'm going to drop these in, maybe 65. But we're not going to. I'm not. We're not going to hear them yet. Maybe I'm going to bring the volume up. Maybe I can use a filter. We can think about some kind of effects automation. Okay. So I know I can play around with this sound in here. This this one I found in Analog Lab. It's a Jupiter 8 sound. I can maybe play around with some of these effects. Maybe not the FM that's adding some inharmonic sort of noise to it. Let's give that, I'm doing a little sound design now, because sometimes you have to do that, like making techno, like the sound design is part of the composition a lot of times, so. Let's try this new uh, reverb they've got in Live 11. Hybrid reverb, right? And let's try the shimmer. All right, that's that's okay for a start. It's adding some more shininess and subtlety. Um, I'm gonna use a rack chain volume for my volume automation and just sort of fade that in, in the background as things build up before the kick drum drops out. Now, it looks like we're getting some CPU things going on here. I wonder if that's the uh, this reverb giving us problems. This is what we get for using beta software in a live stream. All right, I'm gonna, I think this reverb is giving us some trouble. So let's increase our latency. And I'm sure a lot of you guys know that, right? If you start throwing on a bunch of plugins in your session and you start getting dropouts, you know, 
increase your buffer size and you, you have higher latency, but it gives the computer more time to do the processing and maybe we won't get those dropouts anymore. So let's see if that did it. Nope. All right, I think we're gonna have to ditch this reverb. Let's see if that does it. Yep. All right, so let's stick to the old school one. Maybe I need to make a, a report to uh, Ableton Live uh, for their beta about that. I don't know. No, we're still doing it. What? Do you see this? All right, this is a crazy thing to have happen in a live stream, but something's going on with this. I think we've accidentally, I don't know how, accidentally are automating an analog lab parameter that you would never, ever want to do. So I can't imagine. Let's delete that. Let me get rid of this. All right, we're gonna get rid of that. Do not automate that. That was terrible. All right, that, that seems to be the culprit, not the reverb. All right, so I've selected the chain volume. Let's get that fading up. Time to, Mana says, uh, time to pivot from a techno track to a glitch track. We could do that, I guess. Throw in some beat repeats or something. There comes the fading in the atmospheric high thing. It's kind of nice. Actually, that worked better than I thought it would. I like to be able to, if you can add like an atmospheric pad-like thing or spacey thing and the energy level stays up, that's a good sign. All right, I'm gonna dare to automate this filter frequency in the analog lab. And let's get that sounding a little brighter. That's good. All right, I want this to keep going. I'm not done yet. That's a good energy level happening right here at three minutes. Just keep dragging those out. I think I need another layer of percussion on top of this. I think I have something, right? What was that other one that I was using? It's like a faster, shakier slightly more energetic hat let's get that going on in there somewhere all right what parts do we want that to be maybe 97 let's try the new hat in at 97 all right let's get rid of some of this uh resonance Make this synth sound a little stronger. Let's drop the kick drum out. I guess this is our next break. Gonna have to do some kind of effects on this to intensify the synth a little bit more. Keep that high string going. I don't want any of the percussion to go away. I don't want this to break down too much. I want it to keep going up. If anything, maybe I'll fade the bass out because that sounds good when the bass line goes away. Yeah, this is gonna be nice. I think I reached a good energy level here. <laughs> uh, Samuel Messiha, this is literal anxiety for me because me and my sister are the same Mac. So when she has too many tabs open on Safari or whatever, lives just starts dying. So quit Safari. Can't you, doesn't it save all the tabs? I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I'm, yeah, it's difficult to share a computer for music production for someone who doesn't do it, right? You're always at odds on what you're doing with the computer. So, uh, Let's see, where are we at? I feel like I'm like, I'm kind of, 
I want to get lost in this arrangement process, but I got you guys to think about too. Um, this is definitely tightrope walking, like making the music like this and arranging and having it be good. And then also like explaining what I'm doing and answering questions and having these crazy spectral things on the side be really distracting. <laughs> All right, let's listen to this again. I feel like I need to take a breath. All right, I'm going to listen from the beginning and get some perspective on where we're at. I mean, I'm at four minutes, 420. Very nice, very appropriate number to stop at. I want to listen to this and make sure that I'm making the right choices. You definitely want to do this, especially when you're working fast, because you might in the moment make a choice that sounds good in that moment, but then you take a step back and hear it in the whole context and you're like, eh, maybe not the best moment to do that thing. So let's all listen together. And actually, looks like we're doing, we did the drawing a little bit earlier for the winner of our giveaway. Congratulations, Rudy Wolf. You have won the Arturia FX pack. Use it wisely. Use it well. And if you don't know how to use it, come take one of our classes and we'll show you how to use it. <laughs> All right. Hey, Max is here. What's up, Max? Good to know that one of our Berlin students has uh, won the pack. That's excellent. So, yes, indeed. Martin Crockett waiting for that kick to drop. That is where, yeah, we're like, I want the energy level to be up, 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 up. And when that kick drum comes back, oh boy, it better be good, right? We want that we want that drop to like really do the job. But that's I want to know. Do I have the appropriate level of tension? Do I have the energy where I want it to be? Does it feel like the right time to do this bigger build up? And do I know exactly when I need that kick drum to come back? And I'm going to get that perspective by um listening through this. All right, so we've got time. I'm going to take my breath. And uh, let's listen to this from the beginning. So you, you guys can listen along with me and we'll see what we've got so far. And I'm going to refrain from making changes. It's really uh, tempting to fix it as I go, but I just want to listen right now. so good Okay, I lied. I'm making changes, but only to the mix. I'm not changing any arrangement stuff. I just wanted that hi-hat to be a little bright. I like the zaps there. I forgot I should use those again. That's already a change I know I want to make. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm listening for changes that I want to make or that I didn't think of earlier. I feel like in this section, there could be another cool melodic or ele element or noise or something just in the background. All right, there's the noise clap percussion thing. Let's make that a little brighter. And pan it. This is where our high shiny strings start fading in. they could fade in more quickly. Eh, not so bad. Putting more reverb on them. There's that sub coming in nicely. I made a change. I'm sorry, I couldn't help it. But I, I wanted a hi-hat to come in there or something. 
So I know something at 89 has to happen. Could be a crash or something. Good energy level. Maybe that one can fade in instead of just starting suddenly. That might be cool. Pretty intense with that high string just hanging there really bright. Might have to do some modulation to make it more trippy. Martin Crockett all says, all this tension is making me hungry. It's lunchtime. Oh, this is good. And then I... That's the thing that I want to get to. Get the big uplifting chords. I think I got there. I know what to do. That's why I said to stop and go back and listen and make sure, okay, the energy level is getting there. The timing is good. I know I'm going to bring, I don't want it to go on too much longer than that. It would just be like too much of a tease or too much of like of an EDM trance forever buildup. I, I want it to be uplifting and bring up the energy and musical, but n not way true dramatic up and down, up and down all the time. So I think right there, I'm going to give myself a marker at 137 to remind myself to bring the kick drum back in. And then I think somewhere between when the kick drum drops out at 113 and 137, I'm going to take some time and be careful about my composition and make like a really good uplifting bright chord progression like I was just sort of improvising in the moment right there. And that was like I, I felt the inspiration at that moment. I was like, yes, I got there. That's what I was imagining I wanted to do. And I built my arrangement up to get to that point. So, okay, I'm going to say I'm about like, I'm two thirds of the way done in terms of time. I'm thinking I'm halfway done in terms of like the overall arrangement. And then there's the, uh, the polishing and the, I guess, you know, there's the mix polishing, there's the ear candy. I need to find some, other little, you know, atmospheric elements, perhaps, maybe some other percussion sounds to come in every now and then, but I'm not going to go overboard with it. I kind of want to keep it pr pure. And, you know, this is a little bit of an old school vibe I'm going for here. So it's not going to be totally super high tech, crazy percussion pr pr production ness with lots of fills and automation. It just, it's going to be simple and clear and to the point and i want the the energy level to be you know consistent and i want the musical ideas to be pure and emotional without going overboard i think that's what we're going for today so yeah <sighs> thanks max the selway sway in full swing you saw me get into it when i start to play those strings right i'm like yeah <laughs> let's see let's check back with the chat a little bit Ive Van Itterbeek. Damn, missed the start. Gonna watch it back later. I, I, I concur. You should do that. Sebastian Rodriguez says, if you want to break the grid, giving it an odd number breakdown, do you have any pointers to keep track of your timing later in the track? Markers. So like, let's say I want the kick drum to drop like a bar earlier. I could put a marker there as to, to remind myself that that's the first bar of the phrase following it. That's one way you could handle it. Um, <laughs> I don't know. There's some funny stuff going on in the chat here. We're talking about going to the bathroom and coming back from the vet with my dog who is poisoned. I am so very sorry about your dog. I hope your dog is okay. It's really scary when, when, when your pet gets sick or, gosh, and yes, I agree with Martin, uh, Martin Crockett, tasteful levels of ear candy, like a little swoosh here and there at the right moment or a crash symbol. And, you know, already actually, I, you know, this uh, little, the zappy noises are kind of a little bit of ear candy, right? I don't know. What happens if I just sort of arbitrarily 
put them there at 81. <laughs> oh, it's missing the automation because I locked it. That's something to not forget about. Oh, this is another little fast arranging move that I'll do. Let's say I want to copy these clips to another point later instead of hitting command C and command V to copy and paste or whatever you type on your Windows machine or your Mac. Um, I'll make a selection on the timeline. Let's say if I want this to happen at 97, I'll select from 97 to the first, the beginning of that clip and then just duplicate. So it, it just puts it where I want it. Um, I guess that only works if there's nothing else in the middle that you want to copy. In this case, it's fine for like a crash or a, an individual hit of something. Um, sometimes I'll even do it like I'll say, what if I just want this to happen, you know, every so many bars and duplicate, 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 and then it happens that many bars. It's much faster than uh, just clicking and dragging, you know, option clicking and dragging or copy and pasting. It's a little, this is a little faster. So yeah, let's say if I wanted to put it at 97, bang, there it is at 97. Let's see how that sounds there. decent place for it. The strings are a little loud. And I was thinking about automating those a little bit. I don't know. We'll think about that. Well, I was going to fade the bass out. That's an easy one. Such a simple move. Just kind of make the bass slowly disappear and it makes it sound like everything else is going up. And that's been done a million times, but it just works. Let's do this. Let's see what happens if I just duplicate all of this, right? So I just, I don't know, bang. Let's get rid of the high shiny things. I don't know. Nope. All right, what I forgot to do there was to lock the automation. Let's undo that, lock the automation, duplicate. And the bass has to come back. And that's gonna need a crash or some kind of noise or something. And I need to I need to work on the synth and how it's modulating. I I, I want to get into some more subtle movement or more make something more energetic happen with that main synth line so it's not too straight all the time. And um, anyway, we're just about down to the end. Thanks for coming along on this arrangement journey with me. I'd hope to get a little more of the overall structure done, but I, I, have, I feel like I have a pretty good, you know, it's, it's, it's there. It's like, I know what I need to do. I got to write these chords, you know, do, do a little bit more automation, add a little ear candy, mix it, right? I think it's, it's going to come together pretty fast. So uh, nice chat. Guys, uh, some good comments today, some good questions, some some funny stuff going on in there. Uh, congratulations again to our winner, Rudy. Rudy Wolf, who got the Arturia effect. Uh, so have fun with that. Glad to know you're a, a student in Berlin. That's great. Hope your classes are going well for you. I'm sure they are. I'm confident in the ability of our instructors to give you a good experience. <laughs> and... Um, don't forget about the sound system rack plugin to share. Yes, we can do that. I, I think we, we've shared it before. I think uh, Thomas might already have it if, if he's kept track of that. But we'll put a link up. We can probably just put the link here in the, the comments, you know, in the description, sorry, for the, for the YouTube video. And anybody who wants to grab it can grab it. Uh, but we'll see. We'll figure out how to do that. And I'm, 
Thanks, Martin. Glad you think it was a killer session. I agree. I got into it. I know that I got the feeling, you know, and the Selway Sway was happening, as, as Max pointed out. Thanks, Max. And uh, I'm going to call it a day. So uh, next week is Techno Friends. I'm going to announce the guest. We'll see. Still finalizing that. And uh, so please come back uh, next Saturday for Techno Friends where we're going to listen to some music and have a conversation. You know, it's kind of like music industry friends, people I've worked with, people I'd like to get to know better in terms of uh, getting to know them as uh, producers. And uh, so, yeah, hopefully you guys will, will, will be back in the chat for that. Thanks to all the viewers out there. Uh, come back on Monday for Daltrick and every day at 1 p.m. for 343 TV. And I'll see you next week.